Let's look at solar energy. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So, solar, solar energy is in the natural resources, and we will look at the ETF, the TAN ETF, Invesco Solar. So we are at the 52-week low. We have seen a 35% pullback. So this is a pretty big pullback. Um, obviously, uh, we need to be a bit careful about you know picking lows, but you know you uh, you want to buy low and sell high. Uh, when we do measure the time cycles, uh, because there's been some pretty decent time cycles in this space. So th these are very major time cycles: rise, decline, rise, decline, rise, decline, and Based on this time cycle, around October, November is when the current time cycle is supposed to end. So basically, the good times should uh, begin. If we look at, um, let me draw it in. If we look at this time cycle, you see that it actually formed the low here. So it was a bit shifted. So the, the time cycles aren't like perfect. Um, we do, however, see, um, you know, this is a protracted uh, downtrend. So um, if we take from this high to this low, that's a pullback of 56%. Uh, one of the reasons why you def you definitively should use stop loss uh, levels. And like if you have like a juicy gain uh, and stuff like that, nice to hold on to it. Let's actually measure it here. So if you bought this low, and got this high, then that's 458%. If you bought at the same level and you didn't use a stop loss, then you would be looking at 153%. That is from the same level. Uh, so yes, stop loss is, uh, is king. So looking at this chart, obviously it's not bullish, um, but is it shortable? Not too sure about going big short on 10 at this point. Maybe it makes sense to go like big short over here after a spike, but after a protracted downtrend, I don't think so. Uh, let's look at the daily data points as well. Um, in this case, I, I wish I saw more signs of a bottom forming. Uh, we see that we had this starting to develop a bit of a floor, but then we did break, break down. That is not uh, ideal. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you look here at uh, RSI and the PPOs, we are very low, just really low on the weekly RSI. We are very oversold. Um, also on the, you know, the 20 day PPO in purple, the green 50 day, the 50 week PPO and the blue 100 week. Um, this is a very low level on the dailies as well. And when you look at the dailies, zooming in on accumulation distribution, you do actually see a bullish divergence between that and price. MACD also there's a divergence. Okay, so when it comes to solar energy, um, I think we are oversold, sold, um, especially here on the weeklies. Uh, I think I will give the bulls, I give them a very tepid uh, four. Uh, if you are long term, then I do think that this is an even stronger, you know, bullish case. Uh, we did see especially the time cycles. So let me actually just draw in the time cycles as well. And bull time cycles because they were they were really 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 big so there is some bullishness on the horizon but we don't currently have it yet what is very interesting though on that horizon is the seasonality you see here to the left over the last five years in green seven years in blue and ten years in red especially around uh, you know, later September, early October, a very nice bullish seasonality. Looking at the table view here to the right, uh, September so far being pretty red. Yeah, overall it isn't, you know, a bullish month, 
October, looking at the sum, it usually is uh, in the red. But you looking if, when you look at the the previous uh, October's, you see that it's very much sometimes bullish, sometimes bearish. It's uh, messy, um, and that is general generally the case with solar energy. Uh, even if you look at something like April. So April on the surface, it looks like bullish, but then you see that, well, the last three years, it was actually very bearish. So April is also a mess from a seasonality perspective. June was very bearish, but then it became all of a sudden very bullish. So seasonality here, it, it is pretty messy. So because of the messiness of the seasonality, it's it's hard to give like a big score in any direction. I do think I will give this one slightly to, um, I, I didn't like the table view, so I'll give it slightly to the bears, but only with a minus one, so nothing like spectacular. So let's look at fundamental analysis. So I'm first comparing Solar Energy 10 to ICLN, which is the Global Clean Energy ETF. Price earnings, 19 versus 21, so more value in solar. Beta is higher. Uh, the dividend yield, yeah, there's no yield in solar. Uh, there is yield in um, ICLN. Looking at the holdings, some names repeat across the ETFs. Here you can see the breakdown. Market cap, region, country. Let's also compare TAN to XLE. XLE. Okay, so let's start here with the performance. Uh, so XLE is, uh, you know, vintage uh, energy. Uh, PE is much lower. Uh, yield is much higher. Uh, holdings. Uh, here you can see the sector, my end market cap and the region breakdown. So when we compared um, the uh, TAN ETF with ICLN, there is more value in TAN. However, the yield is, there's no yield. Um, but you could also make a strong case that these solar energy companies, they shouldn't, you know, spend money uh, throwing yield uh, all over the place. Uh, so it probably is a good decision. So I do think there is some value here, uh, comparing it against the XLE. There is more value in XLE, but then again, um, the incentives are pretty strong uh, in favor of uh, solar. Um, so I do think I will give the bulls a two on this one. I think it's overall, it's pretty interesting. I wish I could give it a bit more, but it is what it is. Next, we go to relative performance. So I am going to compare it against the ICLN. ICLN, which is, you know, the Global Clean Energy ETF. And we will also compare it against, uh, you know, old school energy, XLE. Okay, so this is, this is a long term. We have minus 14% correlation with S&P 500, 96% positive with ICLN, minus 53% with XLE. Daily data points, short term, minus 65% with S&P 500, almost perfect with ICLN, and, and minus 40% with XLE. So what happens with ICLN is going to have a big effect on TAN. We see a pretty similar pattern with global clean energy. energy. I have no idea where this confetti is coming from. Okay, so if you look here, horizontal support, also some support from back here. But beyond that, there isn't that much support for ICLN. Let's look a bit at RSI. Very, very, very oversold. Very do, um, a bullish face. Uh, daily data points. Um, we are seeing, yeah, you see that um, accumulation distribution and price itself, they are more aligned uh, with ICLN. With the 10, we saw a bullish divergence. With We did see a breakdown in price, but uh, a rising, beginning rising trend in uh, accumulation distribution. 
Uh, let's look at the seasonality. Also a very big bull face on the horizon for ICLN. Table view, mm, not that bullish. Um, so it's, it's a bit messy. Uh, and if you look here at the seasonality, you see that the real bullish seasonality is between uh, mid-October and into later in November, but then it uh, begins to give back and do a roll over. Okay, so now let's compare one to one, 10, 10, and ICLN. Start with the weeklies. Uh, so in this pair, uh, back here on 20-ish of August, uh, we saw a, a very low level reached on RSI in the pair. So there's reason to think that uh, solar energy might begin to outperform the broader global clean energy ETF. Looking at uh, the dailies. Uh, relatively dynamic relationship between the two. Recently, we see see some underperformance from TAN, and that is something we also saw, you know, in the price chart itself, with the, uh, especially in regards to accumulation distribution and its uh, relationship with price. Looking at the seasonality, so from around basically now, so looking at you know the last ten years in red. Uh, we expect a period of solar outperforming broader clean energy. Looking at the table view for uh, September, um, recently solar has outperformed clean energy. October, looking at the sum, usually we see underperformance. Uh, looking at you know the the recent uh, years. It's pretty messy. It's can it can be bullish. It can be bearish. There's no like clean seasonality, except for June. June is a very clear month where tan beats ICLN. Similarly, you could also argue that March is a very obvious month where tan usually underperforms ICLN. So having said all of that, I do think I will give this one to the bulls. Um, I give them a four. This is pretty interesting. So we end up with 2.3 in favor of the bulls. Uh, we are oversold um, on the weeklies. There is a massive bullish time cycle on the horizon. However, this is not a short term trade. This is a long term thesis. So it sort of begs, you know, the question, okay, where on earth do we put in a stop loss level? So like, I'm not a fan of like diamond handing investments, but, it, but if I were to go into that kind of logic, it would be something like, you know, solar energy, any kind of, you know, theme where the long term picture is, is very promising. Um, solar energy is it still has massive room for improvement to become more efficient as I do think that it has a very bright future but you know the issue is okay we are put a stop loss so one of the levels where you know if we do see more deterioration we certainly expect this zone to offer support that's the thing you know that's a key uh, level so how much further down is that? So if we if we measure from here, yeah, okay. Let's get the tool. This tool. That is, that is nine percent. No, ten percent ish. So it basically means, right? If you have a long term trade on, you can't use a previous potential support level as like your stop loss level, you de you definitely don't want to get chicken out at that level. This one is really difficult because there's not really any stop loss here. That sort of makes sense. As far as like a direct uh, level is concerned. Um, you could start to argue that maybe back here, this is, could be a stop loss level, but then again, that is, it's not a lot of data points. 
So generally speaking, I am definitively a fan of having a stop loss level. Uh, but occasionally, you know, you make uh, investments or let's put it this way. You will occasionally spend money on something that you do not purely for charity, but it's also for, for like a greater cause. So in this case, I actually will not have a stop loss level. I will spend a bit of money to support an industry that is struggling that is at a low level. So I'm not, I'm not doing something foolish. I am buying a low level. This is not buying in the top, but I don't have a clear exit here. Uh, this however is an ind industry where I want to support to support it. So yes, in this case, I actually will not have a stop loss level. I will, I will not buy a big position. Uh, I, um, I do however think that Buying 10 now has a good probability of, of me being able to exit with a profit in the future. And bear in mind that 10 is an ETF. Okay, this is not like an option that decays or anything like that. I could hold 10 for years, you know, without really much problem. I would be very surprised if the solar energy industry with all of the support behind it, it's just going to go and crash and burn. I would be very shocked. And if I stand there holding my ETF shares in 10 with it crashing and burning, I would be very surprised. And I also think that my investor friends would also be like very surprised that I actually lost money on that trade because it's not like one of those industries that's supposed you know, to go to zero or anything like that. So yeah, this is a long-term investment. It's also more of a social investment. So yeah, I'm bullish, but uh, when will I exit with a profit? Not sure.